Hi guys, my name is Brianna and welcome to my channel. Today's video is a little different from the ones I had previously made. As you see in the title, I'm going to be sharing a bit about my life and my experience as someone with low vision. I'm making this video to spread awareness of the visually impaired community and to give insight into someone with my specific medical condition. I want to clarify that I'm not an expert in any way and visual impairment varies from person to person. I am simply sharing my experience of what I've learned from specialists throughout the past few years. I have blind spots in both of my eyes due to scarring in the retina of each eye. Blind spots pretty much are parts of the vision where you can't see anything. So in my specific case, my blind spots are located in the center of my entire field of vision. Anything located in that area, I can't see it. And although most people might think that blind spots are generally black, I see color, like my brain is still stimulated because my eyes work properly. It's just that the retina that transfers the information to my brain is damaged. What I am seeing right now is pretty much like a circular colorful cloud. But the blind spots I have are actually a result of a medical condition called ocular toxoplasmosis. I will spell it out down here. It is a chronic medical condition that almost one third of the world has. It just presents itself very differently from case to case. Some ways you can get it are by eating undercooked meat, unwashed vegetables, contaminated water, or simply by coming in contact with a cat, an infected cat, or a litter box or a sandbox. Like I said, one third of the world is infected with toxoplasmosis, but you can get it in different stages of your life. I have always been so surprised that although toxoplasmosis does affect a third of the world's population, there is no cure and there is no way to reduce the extent of the damage or the severity of the parasite. In my case, I was diagnosed with ocular toxoplasmosis around age 6 in a routine eye checkup, but the optometrist never clarified to my parents how severe the condition was or at least the risks that come with having this condition. So I went on with my life unaware of the possible consequences and at age 14 is when I went through what is considered a crisis and at that point is the first time I ever learned of the severity of living with ocular toxoplasmosis. Since it had been so many years since I originally was diagnosed, the doctors couldn't tell me specifically how I got infected, but their theory is that I was infected while my mom was pregnant. So when it comes to pregnancy and toxoplasmosis, usually the parasite, rather than infecting the mother, goes on to infect the fetus. A mother can remain unaware and not know of the infection until they give birth. When a mother becomes infected by toxoplasmosis, the child can be born with damage to the brain, neurological system, and or the eye. How I was taught to understand toxoplasmosis was that the parasite chooses a part of your body or organ to locate itself in and once it chooses a location you could say it doesn't travel to other parts of your body i hope that's making sense specialists have told me that out of all the possible outcomes of toxoplasmosis i am lucky because my toxoplasmosis is located in the eye i know it may be strange to say that having a visual impairment is the luckiest of the possible cases but it is because the worst thing that can happen to me is vision loss while for other people they develop heart issues brain damage and it simply makes for life full of many difficulties so considering everyone that is infected with toxoplasmosis not just the people that were born with the condition so usually the immune system does a good job of keeping the parasite in check but often while keeping it in check, it does create some collateral damage, such as damage to the eye, the heart, or the brain, which is why I have ocular toxoplasmosis, which is toxoplasmosis in the eye. And in these cases, when the immune system does keep the parasite in check, that stage is considered when the parasite is dormant 
which means that the parasite is doing nothing. It's simply living off of your body. Even though many people have toxoplasmosis, not everyone develops symptoms or symptoms that can at least be recognized. And in these cases, when the infection goes untreated, it could result in loss of sight, neurological damage, and brain inflammation, which is why it's so important for people that are aware of their diagnosis to recognize the warning signs. For me, when I first underwent a crisis and I was old enough to understand what was happening, I developed extreme sensitivity to sunlight and experienced difficulty reading regular text. So I have been able to get treated early on in every crisis, which has reduced the severity of the inflammation and therefore helped reduce the extent of the damage. Although there is medicine to reduce the inflammation, there is no cure or way of removing the damage that has been caused by the parasite. How I always describe ocular toxoplasmosis to the average person is that it is an unpredictable and incurable condition. Once there's damage, there's simply damage. There's not much that can be done about it. Now that I have given you a general overview of what toxoplasmosis is, I wanna share more about my personal experience. If you would like to hear more content about my life story, please remember to like and subscribe. Like I said, I became aware of my condition when I was 14. Since then, I've had three crises. So it is three times that the parasite has become active and caused inflammation in my retinas. In each case, it was one eye or the other. It was never both. And like I said, I have been able to go through rounds of treatment, but the damage is permanent so there are scars in my retina which is why I can't see in certain areas. There are people that do get scars in their retinas and since it's not in the center of vision they can go on with their normal life. And out of the whole area in the retina where my scars could be located, mine are located in the worst spot. The center of vision is very important in focusing which is why my blind spots are a challenge I face constantly. If my blind spots were located in my peripheral vision it would be much easier to see, but that's not the case. When it came to the multiple crises, crises, you know what I mean. The specialists were very surprised that I was undergoing these episodes so soon after the other. And since my condition is unpredictable, all they could do is give me their professional opinion. And they believe that I went through this situation three times throughout two years because I was going through puberty and the hormonal change was constantly affecting my immune system and that's when the parasite would take advantage of the opportunity. You have no idea how often I've gone to eye doctors, whether it was optometrists, ophthalmologists, or retina specialists and they've told me that it is so surprising to see this extent of damage to the retina in such a young person. So there is no way to get rid of the parasite without hurting me. It's pretty much if I'm healthy, the parasite's healthy. I will be posting another video where I go more into detail about how I, how I see and how I go about my life, but I can include it in this one because it would be way too long. If you would like to hear more content about my life story, please remember to like and subscribe. So for me, this all happened when I was barely starting my teenage life and it was a huge adjustment. I'm not gonna lie, it was not easy. I learned to appreciate everything I could see from that point on, but I was so fortunate that the universe led me to a high school that did have a program for visually impaired students. And there was only a handful of programs like that in Los Angeles. So how I see it, I was meant to go to that school to help me adjust to this new part of my life. And my visual impairment definitely drastically changed my life, but there's so many things I have learned from it and it has made me a stronger and more independent person. It taught me early on in life to overcome challenges and to accept yourself for who you are. I'm making this video so other people that are going through a similar situation, whether it is undergoing a new medical diagnosis or dealing with a disability or just simply having a difficult time to show to them that no matter what you go through, you can overcome it and to not let stereotypes define who you are because i'm certain if i had just followed what other people thought i wouldn't have got to where i am today i am someone with a disability 
and I am someone with a visual impairment, but I never let my disability define who I am. I'm just simply someone with a visual impairment that just lives life a little different from the average person. I am still able to live a full life even though I don't do everything like everyone else. I'm still able to do what I wish, when I wish, and how I want. Even though I have a visual impairment, I'm still able to live an independent life. I still go to university and I live on campus and I buy my own groceries and take care of myself and I do everything the typical college student would do. And the reason for this is that nowadays there is so much technology and assistive services for people with disabilities that there aren't many limitations. I don't know how life would be with a visual impairment if I wasn't living in the 21st century. And the best thing I can take away from this experience so far is that everything happens for a reason. I know it is cheesy to say, but being visually impaired has taught me so much and it has taught me to appreciate life much more and to take advantage of every opportunity possible. You must always remember that life is unpredictable. Nobody knows what will happen later today or tomorrow. No matter how much you plan, life never goes exactly as we wish it did. So you have to seize every opportunity and seize every day to make the most of it. If you would like to hear more content like this, please click the subscribe button and click the notification bell to stay tuned. And remember, in order to live your best life, you always have to keep it real. Bye.